big news. You may have noticed I have over 1 million followers now. That means you got it, my YouTube play button. They wouldn't give me one at 100,000 and look like they were going to refuse the 1 million button also, but thanks to a lot of community support, they finally agreed to send me not only the 1 million follower button, but also my 100,000. Those are going right up on the wall. There are too many people who have helped for me to thank them all. But thanks to Sapense, Maker Smiles, Becky Sturm, Julia Sage, and Joe Telling for supporting me, featuring me, and talking about me on their channels. Hacksmith for teaching me how to actually earn a living at this, giving me encouragement, but more than that, giving me advice with hard numbers so I knew what to charge sponsors. Thanks to Creality and JLC PCB for not just being great sponsors, but being the kind of sponsors who I can genuinely believe in. But most of all, thanks to Lee Morphy and Philip Turong at Adafruit, absolutely 100% I would not be here without them. They encouraged and supported me from the beginning, spoke up for me, sent parts and work when I needed it to keep the channel going. Almost everything I know about electronics, I learned from Adafruit tutorials. Many of my own projects are based on projects from the Adafruit site. It's impossible to overstate just how much Limo and Philip have done for me. And there's the problem, it's just overwhelming. Every time I sit down to shoot a video with an Adafruit product, I get absolutely paralyzed trying to make it good enough. I did one video for them a while ago, and it was the most disliked video they have ever posted on their YouTube channel. It's pretty hard to get past the pressure when it's someone whose opinion you value so highly and you've already felt so badly once. They sent me a whole box of stuff for free almost two years ago. This is the fifth time I'm trying to shoot a video with some of it, but I'm going to keep it simple and hopefully do right by free Lao Shi this time. One of the areas Adafruit focuses on is technical education, and that's something I get asked about a lot. STEM education products are a huge industry. Every parent is worried their kid is going to fall behind. And parents, they keep asking me how they can get their kid interested in STEM. Unfortunately, very few take the time to wonder if I'm not interested enough to learn how to use these products, why would my kid be? So first things first. If you can't learn to use a STEM education product or don't intend to use it with your child or think it will teach them without the aid of you or teacher, you are in for a bad time. You don't buy your kid a violin and a book and expect them to become a musician without lessons or expect them to suddenly be passionate about the violin. Sure, the tech industry is full of people who are passionate about tech as kids and were self-motivated learners. Every field has people like that. But you can't expect all people to be that way. Imagine you try to recruit for medical school only with people who are passionate about medicine as children and always wanted a career in that field. They would probably be amazing doctors and nurses, but they would never be in love of them. Likewise with technology. Children do as they see before they do as they are told. They mimic the people around them. If you want your kids involved in STEM activities, the best way is for you to be involved. Sit down with your child and do it together, or at the very least, have them do it in a classroom. As a rule, if you as an adult can use the product, then they probably can't use it either. If you or a teacher won't do it with them, they probably won't be any more interested than you are. As I've mentioned previously, I think the first, second, and third most important thing to buy for technical education at any age is a used laptop. I recommend the ThinkPad X220. It will take you an hour to learn to install Linux 
and you'll never be without a reliable cheap computer again you can learn to code learn infosec hardware development network engineering anything else you can think of all with free open source software a used laptop with Linux is by far the highest ROI learning tool out there and the variety of tutorials available is huge. You already have a fancy new Mac or Windows machine? Great! Still get an old clunky ThinkPad with Linux and learn it anyway. No, dual boot really isn't the same, but if you insist, it's better than nothing. A second laptop is handy since you can watch videos and tutorials on one and follow along on the other even if you are disconnected from the network. You can check out my video on installing Linux on a used laptop in the description box. But what comes after a used laptop with Linux? Single board computers like the Raspberry Pi are a popular option. You, you will already have a good working knowledge of Linux from your used laptop and an SPC lets you control lights and buzzers and things like that. This is enormously powerful, but the components you need aren't really standardized for education. And while there are tons of tutorials out there, the quality varies and you can spend hours following bad instructions step by step and getting nowhere, which can be quite frustrating. It's absolutely something worth doing eventually, but in my opinion, probably just a little down the line. So if not an SBC next, then what? My recommendation is the Adafruit Circuit Program. No, this isn't sponsored or anything, and it's not because of the high esteem I hold Limor and Adafruit in. Here's why I like the circuit program so much. In my opinion, Adafruit has the absolute best curriculum of any STEM education company by far. The microbit is also very good hardware, but on its own, it's much more limited than the circuit program. And the tutorials are nowhere near as good. My own educational board that I developed the Sinobit is specific to Asian educational requirements. Its 12 by 12 display allows for Chinese characters. But it's not all that useful in countries that use the Latin alphabet. The circuit program has the right comb combination of components built right in to be engaging on its own without additional parts needed until you move on to very advanced projects. The second reason I like it is that it supports and teaches MicroPython. In two terms, Python is like a hacksaw, drill press, and a good set of files. It will never be a milling machine, but given enough time, you can make darn near anything. Python is simple and can also do almost anything, just often not very efficiently, but a little Python goes a long way. I would consider the circuit playground a purely educational tool. I probably wouldn't use it for prototyping, but the code you learn to run on it can be used on lots of other things. I recommend just working your way through the different projects and tutorials, then you'll have an idea of what board will be suitable for an actual project. So right now, I'm going to plug it in and run you through a simple tutorial. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under 24 hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just $2 in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. Okay, so if this is your first time coding, here's how it works. First time, you just use someone else's code. Second time, you make a small change. To be honest, lots of people just keep doing that. You don't really have to write anything from scratch until you are doing something very tricky. Still, eventually, you need to be able to write your own. The best way to learn how to do that is with my friend and Barella's book, Getting Started with Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. You might see the book offered online with a different first name for the author. Don't worry about it. That's the right Barella. One of the best teachers I know.
But for now, we're going to start with a fun project from Jacqueline over at the Sandra YouTube channel. Check out their link in the description box. They've got a lot of great videos. Jacqueline made a really cool project to count her punches when she exercises. I've already done a build that involves punches, my HIIT 15 sensor project. So I'm going to use her code for something else. This is a stone lock, a traditional Chinese exercise tool. It's a little bit like a kettlebell, but there's a lot more throwing and catching. It's a pretty well-balanced form of exercise. You need strength, endurance, speed, timing, and hand-eye coordination. So it's been a favorite of martial arts practitioners for thousands of years. These days, you'll see aunties and uncles in the park throwing around unbelievable weights. You can't do that unless you have been training for years, decades even. So if I want to be a strong auntie one day, I have to start with the very light weights now. The stone version is beautiful, but I don't want to risk dropping it on my head or foot until I get much better. So I have this modern version cover with dance foam while it is a traditional tool and I'll be training within the traditional Chinese way. That does not mean I can add a little tech to it. What I'm going to do is use the circuit playground build in a accelerometer to help me count reps so I don't lose track. Let me show you how. So we are in the Hexter IO pages. This is the counting pages with circuit playground and express breast page. Let's scroll down. Uh, things used in this project. And uh, there is a link of the Mako. Let's open it because we are going to use Mako uh, to do this. It is kind of like Scratch. You can use their block codes. You can add more if you wanted to do different things. So this is the code that Jacqueline uh, put in and uh, we are going to download it and load it on our uh, Circuit Playground Express. What you are going to do is to press reset button twice until all the light lights up. That's when you are going to see the... When it happens, uh, the C play boot is here and we are going to download it, download the code and uh, I'm going to save it. I copied it and then you just paste it to the folder. Now let's take a look. So right now I've been, I already load the code, right? Uh, I think for every set you shake it like one time, the purple lights uh, will lit every time you shape it, it count. And when you finish one set, the red lights will light up. One, two, three, four. Okay, the second set is done. One, two, three, four. The third one is done, right? We can see there is three LED lights up. One, two, three, four. And at the end, it will make a sound saying that you complete a whole uh, section of it. I'm just keep shaving it. But you can't just shake it randomly. I guess you have to really actually fold an accurate one. One, two, three, four. So now it's one, two, three, four, five, five LED, uh, red light LED lights up. That means um, I've completely five times six, one, two, three, four. Two more, then I will finish the first section. 
and then it does music. You hear the, the sound, that means I finish it, and then just reset. So that's pretty much it. Sim easy and simple. Now let's go upstairs, go to my balcony, and let's try it. Wait, first I have to put it in my pretty pretty enclosure, then we will try it. Now let's test it upstairs. Because it's during the day, so it's probably a little bit difficult to see the LED lights up in the sun, but let's give it a try. One set is done. Almost done. So once I complete the set, it, uh, set off the sound, beep, 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 beep. I don't know if you, if you can hear it. And then the LED light uh, goes back to zero. And um, if I do a couple more swing, the LED complete one set, turn to red. And if I want to restart, just hit restart button. It goes off again, and then we can restart. But now I need to catch my breath and take a break. Whew. There we go, fast and simple. Please subscribe, I'll see you all next time. And remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.